It was 79 degrees yesterday. It was snowing this morning. Welcome to Texas. Hey, thanks for joining me on the channel today. Yes, the weather is insane. It's February, but guess what that means? Spring is right around the corner. RV season is upon us, and we are super excited uh, that we've got some really great trips coming up this year. In fact, uh, in March is our first extended trip that we're going to take. We've gotten the leisure travel van out a little bit. You know, the weather's been decent enough this winter that we've taken it out for some weekends and things like that. But man, I'm really looking forward to hitting the road and taking some extended trips. So that brings me to what upgrades am I going to do and what upgrades might you want to do? So the very first thing that I'm thinking about doing, uh, which I need some help uh, from the, the community that's already done this, if I should do this, is add Sumo Springs. Now then, I've got a 2020 Unity FX. So I've got the newer Sprinter chassis where they beefed up that sway bar. So when I'm on the highway, uh, semis passing me or crosswinds, those don't bother me at all. Where I come into like I need something done quick is when you turn, no matter what speed you're going, when you turn off a street into either a parking lot or a driveway and what have you, and it's a set different elevation, man, that leisure your travel van just goes like this. I mean, drawers can fly open. Anything you didn't, you know, batten down can go flying. And plus, it's just not a very good experience, right? It's kind of jarring. And so I'm hoping that Sumo Springs will help solve that. And Sumo Springs are just kind of bump stops, I guess you would call them. Uh, but I want to know, do they really work? So if you have installed these, please let me know in the comments down below. Do I need to do this? Should I, you know, even, even consider it? So put those comments down below. Now, the second thing that I'm going to do, and I've had these for quite a while, I just never have installed them, which is tire minders. So I've got a, uh, the uh, Mercedes-Benz chassis does not come with a tire pressure monitoring system. If you buy a Wonder, yes, Ford was kind enough to give you a TPMS. Mercedes, not so much. And so uh, the tire minders are just uh, things you screw on um, to your tires. I do believe that you have to, um, you know, upgrade your stems. Um, but, and so that's why I haven't done this yet. It's a little, it's not as easy as just screwing the, the you know, the receivers on or the, the, the little, um, uh, little caps on. Is that you have to change out the stems. I just have not done that yet. Now then, is it a big deal? Do I need this? Not really, because what I do now is anytime I'm about to uh, to drive, I always I have an awesome little uh, tire pressure monitor. I mean, a, a, a gauge that I just go around all the tires. I just check check tire pressure. If they need some air. Then I carry my Viair with me, and it's super, super simple. And if you want to know everything that we carry in our LTV, I'll put that link right there, and that way it's a one-stop shop if you're trying to supply your RV. Uh, so everything on there is we've tried and tested, and and what we really, really love about having carrying with us in a leisure travel van. Now then. That's another thing I plan on doing. Now, then, one thing that I'm having a lot of people tell me they want to do is upgrade their inverter and upgrade to lithium batteries. Right when I got my coach, lithium batteries was one of the first things I did. I added a soft start, I added lithium batteries, and I upgraded to a 3,000 watt inverter. Now, what's a soft start? Well, uh, your air conditioner without the soft start has a massive amps amperage spike um, that it that it creates. I mean, it's milliseconds, but it's a it, it can blow a breaker if you're plugged into a household plug, and that's the main reason I did it at first was I wanted to be able to plug my RV into a household plug. I didn't want to spend you know money to put an RV plug in when I didn't have to. I can just plug my leisure travel van into a household plug and run my air conditioner. Okay. Uh, but again, that 15 or 20 amp house, house plug, it, it can't handle that spike that the air conditioner does. So the soft start, it just levels that out to where it doesn't create that spike. So I suggest that for anybody who wants to be able to plug in anywhere, right? But what that also does, it allows me to run my air conditioner off of my lithium battery and my 3000 watt inverter. So, and that has really changed the game for us when it comes to the way that we like to travel. So when Jen and I are out, we don't necessarily like to stay on the interstate unless we're in a hurry. 
We love to get off onto the little highways, go to the little towns. Janet loves to go antique shopping, things like that. And we have our two dogs with us at all times. So if we want to leave them in the coach, and the last thing you want to do if you're parked in a little town, downtown area, is run your generator. It's just going to draw attention to your coach. It's going to, uh, you know, it's loud, it's smelly, it's terrible. Generators are not great, okay? They're great for when you need them, but if you don't have to, I do not want to turn it on. So the having the ability to run my air conditioner for several hours uh, to leave the dogs in there silently, man, that is fantastic. Uh, we can go out guilt-free, leave the dogs in, and enjoy uh, sightseeing. We can enjoy, um, like I said, Janet loves antique shops, things like that. Go out to eat, different things like that in the middle of the summer. Because those RVs, no matter what you do, they are hot boxes. I mean, hot boxes. And that brings me to this as well. I'm excited to announce that the skylight covers are in. This is the bath. This particular one, this fits in the shower um, of the uh, Leisure Travel Van, the shower uh, skylight. Because those skylights are the your enemy when it comes to insulation of the RV. That is the weak point, um, and it's super hot in the summer and super cold in the winter, and that solves that problem. Now then, we'll have those available. Go to PagosaSupply.co, and those should be available really soon. And if you're on the wait list, which we a lot of people have gotten on the wait list, um, we're going to offer them to you first. And so, anyway, be sure to check those out. Now then. Um, I've got really good news as well if you're wanting to get an, a 3,000 watt inverter is if you have a 2020 or newer leisure travel van is that inverter swap out is just that. It's just a swap out. Whenever I change mine out, uh, the consensus was you really need to upgrade wiring to 4 aught from the 2 aught that leisure travel van gives you to upgrade the 250 amp fuse to a 350 amp fuse. Well, guess what? That is no more. Um, as time has gone by and we've learned more and more that you can exchange your 2000 watt inverter with a 3000 watt inverter. You can exchange your, those, it, whatever batteries you have in it, whether it's AGMs, lead acids, whatever it may be, just um, put in the lithiums and you are good to go. Now then, if you do upgrade to a 3000 watt inverter, the only thing that we are suggesting you do add one of these. This is a uh, on-off switch that goes between your inverter and your battery that's going to help uh, with the uh, thing called capacitive inrush. Yes, if you want to learn more about that, all of that technical stuff, I did a great interview with the owner of Lithionics Battery. I'll link that right there so you can learn all about that. But yes, these 3000 watt and above inverters can damage your lithium batteries no matter what brand it is. Um, if you have a Victron uh, 3000 watt inverter, that's even worse because it has double the capacitive inrush that a Xantrax or a Kaze, for example, has. And so you'll definitely want to, you know, make sure you're taking every step possible to um, get as much resistance as you can so that doesn't hurt your batteries. But with that being said, like I said, it's just good news. So if you want a 3000 watt inverter, just buy one and it's just a swap out. Um, if you want a 315 amp hour battery like I have, Lithionics, um, that is just a swap out. And so um, I really highly recommend the Lithionics, and not just because my company is also a dealer of Lithionics. I was a user way before I was a dealer. But I'll tell you this, it really changed the way that we RV. It has enhanced our RV lifestyle. I never want to be handcuffed to a power pole and having as much lithium as I can um, is fantastic. And again, space is a premium. And a 315 amp hour fits where two of the traditional size AGM or lithium goes. So that 315 amp hours is the equivalent of six AGMs because you don't want to run AGMs down past 50% state of charge. And it's like two or 3.3 uh, traditional sized 100 amp hour um, lithium batteries. So space is a premium. And the Lithionics, it is way better per amp hour price-wise than, say, the Dragonflies from Leisure Travel Van. But if you want to just have your Leisure Travel Van come with Lithium, you know, go that route. But if you want to do it aftermarket, I really suggest the Lithionics. Look into that built-in Bluetooth, built-in heater. It's just a one-stop shop. Anyway, but with that being said, it is good news if you want to upgrade that um, inverter. 
because it can be all intimidating. So, but do your due diligence. Make sure that everything you do, because, uh, you know, um, electricity is, you, one, you want to do it safely, and two, it's very expensive. So do your due diligence to make sure that that's what you want to do. Anyway, but with that being said, I think that's about all I have to say. Uh, again, let me know if sumos are wise to do. I'll let you know how the tire reminder does soon. Um, and then I also have a, um, a new backup camera that I'm going to be trying out soon. So make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. And that little bell tells you when I release videos that you can see all of this stuff. So I'm going to be trying some things out. Really looking forward to RV season coming up. Really excited about that. But with that being said, that's all I have for this week. And we will see you next time. Next time.